Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. It's really awesome to have you guys here and to be chatting with you today about social media, about creating online content, and about being comedians. Um, so I guess I'm going to start by asking you guys to introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about what you do, what platforms you create on, um, and maybe tell us um, your thing you're most proud of. Amy, do you want to start? Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm Amy LeJoie, and I have been making content um, pretty much on everything, uh, most popular on Instagram, um, and then followed by, I think, Facebook. Um, yeah, but I mainly do a lot of comedic videos. Um, the things I'm most known for are my film crew parodies and anything that has to do with like being on a film set. Um, but I have some other characters as well. Um, I recently have added Mitch McConnell impressions to my <laughs> uh, repertoire. Um, yeah, that's that's a little bit about bit about me. Writer, director, actor, editor. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny in like artistics. It's like, well, I'm a director and a comedian and an actress and a dancer. Cause like, you gotta have like the full, it's like, here's my full resume. We can yeah. have to do it all. Yeah. We kind of got to. Um, I'm in film group. Yeah. Um, my name is Steph Curran. Um, I am a comedian in Newfoundland. Um, I'm also an actress. Um, I produce a lot of content on TikTok mostly, um, but I'm like kind of trying to integrate that into my Instagram to kind of like use both of those. Um, and I'm also a sketch comedian. So I'm in a sketch group uh, called Moms Girls with Andy um, and a member of Half Handsome, which is another sketch group. Um, and was it the thing I'm most proud of? Um, that, <laughs> okay, this is like a really random one, but um, my mom gets recognized for my TikToks now. And I'm really proud about that because my mom is so shy and she's like, no one look at me, but I'm like, everyone look at my mom. So I'm really proud that I can give my mom recognition while at the bingo hall. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. uh, and how did it all begin for you guys? Did you start posting things on Facebook, getting status likes, and or did you immediately start on Instagram? Like, how did you decide to start building a following online? I've been um, trying to make things for years. Um, it finally got to the point where I realized that I needed to, like, I wasn't really getting a lot of success in the industry as far as acting goes, even like getting auditions and then let alone booking something. Um, so it really got to the point where I thought, well, I need to start making my own content because I don't want to give up. And I know that at least some people think that I'm good. So I just need to ride that out. Um, I first, the first big thing I was working on um, that I created was a web series that filmed for most of 2019 and that was called the Bumble Bums. We recreated actual bad dates, uh, many of which were mine. Uh, and then <laughs> once the pandemic hit, we weren't filming anymore. I didn't want to get people together and risk exposure. And I, uh, yeah, I just started kind of like doing my own things of like, I'm bored, I'm at home. I just started putting things out there and was doing that for a few months wasn't really getting a lot of hits on things and uh it wasn't until i made this one fateful tiktok that <laughs> was like a tiktok trend and then made a, a few uh, similar to that and they went viral and that really changed everything and i will probably never be able to replicate what happened <laughs> with that <laughs> um how did it go viral how many people saw it and did a lot of people try to do the same to build off it yeah, it was, I honestly don't even know at this point, because um, there were so many people that reposted it, like I would find a new Facebook page, like, oh, it has over a million views just on this page. And that's how many other pages have reposted it. And then it went viral again, when someone had posted it on Twitter, it wasn't even on, on my own account. But then last time I checked, I think it had like over 7 million views. Um, yeah. and it was just like a crazy like couple of days on Twitter. Um, yeah, and it's, I've made a lot of similar videos instead of like, okay, people like these film industry videos, there are a lot of people who um, hadn't really been represented before in a lot of um, content of, you know, just kind of like the, the underdogs of film sets. So yeah, since then, I definitely, that's, that's become my most popular content is people wanting to see their specific department represented in a film or in a short video. 
Yeah, I have to say, I really love those videos you do. I, I've done craft and catering on film sets, but I've also written and directed a few shorts. And like, I've done lots of different little jobs, trying things out to see what I like. And it's like, you instantly, you just capture it so beautifully. <laughs> like the token like, female grip to me was like a chef's kiss. Yeah, yeah. I had, oh, I know we're going to talk about comments later, I think, is one of our questions. It's, but yeah some women were kind of offended by that I was like that's that's not I'm I'm trying to point out that there that is an issue that there aren't a lot of women in most of these departments and yeah we need to change that I'm not trying to I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah you weren't trying to hurt your feelings you were no to, no yeah. <laughs> um Steph tell us about how you building your online presence was there one moment for you that like helped things yeah um uh, similar to Amy, like, you know, I, I was a show choir kid growing up. So I was, was a you? singer and dancer. <laughs> I was in Annie um, and Cats. But like, I guess I have always, I come from a really big background of, of trauma, which, which is like a lot of obstacles in my childhood. And I've just always been funny. Like, I remember sitting at the dinner table with my brother, who actually, like, I contribute a lot of my comedic timing and skill to because he used to make me roar at the dinner table. Like I would spit out food, like I would choke, like it was hilarious. So from his like way of speaking, I kind of adapted. And then when I got into university, I kind of explored going from acting to um, comedic roles only. And then, you know, like when you did, like I was in Little Women and I was like, this doesn't feel the same to me. Like it's, it's not the same kind of like rapport with the audience. It doesn't make me feel the same. Um, and then finally, I was asked to audition for a sketch show called Almost Bamus, which Amy, you're not a Newfoundlander, but famous, like Bamus is like from the Bay, when you're from the Bay, Newfoundland. So it's like Bamus. So it's a little kind of, you know, um, <laughs> little kind of, you know, um, but I auditioned and I got in the show. And ever since then, it's like the moment that you get out on stage and actually like make someone laugh. It's like incredible. And it was such a, a high for me that I just wanted to keep doing it. Um, um, Steph, do you remember your audition? I just, I know it's a good story, so. Yes, so for my audition, uh, so they gave us sides and I wish I could remember uh, what sketch show it was from, it was from. Um, but it was, a, it was a scene, it was like, oh, can I, can I use this chair? Can, is it okay if I sit in this chair? But the beginning of the script says, you know, the guy cracks his neck and I have never cracked my neck in my entire life. I was like, well, whatever. And I go in and I, and I kid you not, I'm like, uh, uh, and like crack up either side of my neck. And I'm like, well, Jesus Christ was here with me this evening. Um, and the guys had, the guys who did the show said, uh, we'll tell you now that like the crack was the minute they knew that they were going to cast me in the show. And I was like, Thank you, Nick. Add that to your resume. You can crack on cue. <laughs> well, I can, I can hope to God I crack on cue. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I started doing TikTok. And when I started doing TikTok, uh, I was doing stupid, like I almost want to go back and delete, like I was doing like dances and stuff. Like it was embarrassing. Like it was just this, cause when I downloaded it and I used to use Vine, which was like really big. Yes. And I was, I'll never forget when I was recognized at my university and they're like hey you're that girl from vine and i'm like this is it <laughs> so when vine left i was like tiktok is a great uh it's very similar but it's almost like advanced it's like an adult version of vine uh used by 12 year olds uh but it's it's so much more uh elaborate and it allows you to do so much more things so i was making a few tiktoks here and there and then the one that really started it uh amy you will like this story so during covid <laughs> Newfoundland had these COVID updates on Facebook. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Newfoundland, but the people here are very open with sharing. Uh, and there was in the comment section, uh, it was this, uh, I, I believe it was Greg who was posting. It was like, Mabel, call me, like, I miss you. Like, uh, my God, like, come home. Like I got the kettle on, like all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, someone find Mabel. Like, where is Mabel? <laughs> And I just like documented it on TikTok and it blew up. Um, and then it just started, I started doing goofy stuff on TikTok and then it just propelled me into it. But Greg and Mabel, thank you <laughs> for doing that for yeah. me. 
it's yeah. funny how sometimes it's like you know that the content you've made before was still it's like I'm funny I'm making good things but no one sees it <laughs> and sometimes it takes just like that one video to at least get those followers and then people are like you're so funny it's like yeah I've been doing this for years <laughs> I've been here <laughs> yeah where it's are true. you <laughs> it's true TikTok and it's so there is no one and we have a section about this but there the algorithm is so random it can pick up anything and like anything like you I could post a video now of me like doing jumping jacks and it'd be like four million views and then it's me doing like a full sketch and it's like zero yeah and I'm like I still okay. haven't figured TikTok out in that regard yeah. <laughs> yeah um how do you guys and pardon me if this is rude but how do you guys make money off your content or is it more like you maybe product exchange maybe someone will give you something to wear or something does that happen I've gotten, um, I haven't gotten any things on um, TikTok yet, but on my Instagram, my cat just came in, <laughs> we hear meowing. Um, on Instagram, I have been approached by some people. Um, I know the first one was um, this kind of like luxury pajama company and they offered to like, just give me a pair of pajamas and these were like $200 pajamas and I was like hell yeah, I don't want more. yeah. <laughs> and so I just had to like post some things to my Instagram story but I have I have been a lot more selective now where like I will only do paid things um fortunately depending on what it is I've been in the position where I can um make an ad that is still something that my followers would actually like where it's like okay so I get to use some of my film characters and things like that um I was approached by one company and they wanted me they're like we want you to make um ads like you know like for like the the honey app and we want it to look like it's just like one of your instagram stories i was like i can't do that that's not even though it's like yes technically i need money but that was like i'm not if i could make it funny if i could uh you know do something that i know that my followers will actually enjoy watching then i do that but if it's just me like hey guys i saved so much money using it's like Ugh, i can't i can't do that um yeah, but definitely trying to make money doing what you love is forever the challenge. Uh, <laughs> I do. I did recently set up a Patreon, um, and hopefully, I'll just continue to become an influencer and get paid content that is both interesting and informative. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's definitely something that you could still do from home while um, I'm I'm not really still like getting uh auditions as far as like other paid work goes even though i've had a lot of people are like oh you must have had so many people approach you like not really actually <laughs> like, <laughs> um yeah so that's that's kind of where things are going now instead yeah. long answer influencers <laughs> make it look so easy they're like here's my all my brands and here's everyone who sponsors me like it isn't that easy <laughs> because i am with you on that i like I have been approached by people, not for money, but for brand exchange, like you said, which is usually what um, people uh, give, like you get, a, you know, free products and you support them, whatever. Um, I try to do it only for local brands. Like I just did one for a tea company, um, which was run by my friend who I met online. He's really nice. So I was like, yeah, totally. Like I love tea. And that's something that I'm genuinely interested in because like, it's a different thing too. Um, someone's like here's a product and I'm like I would never use this so like why would I want to lie like I'm trying to be very genuine and like continually continuously be a genuine me so I don't want to like you know push something that I wouldn't use or I don't believe in or whatever um I do work with um a uh vintage uh collection company in Halifax called Fat Chance Vintage I've done a bunch of stuff with them and they like thrift, um, they like curate clothes for plus size women um, and humans, which is really great. And that's something I really like. So I, I do like um, get a few brand things, but it's weird. I don't really like making branded content. Like it almost feels like I am going back on who I am as an artist, which like everyone knows that artists gotta make their money. Like that's, you know, um, but I guess it's just like, I do have a full-time job. I have an office job. I have a government job. So it's like, I, I'm fine on the, the money front. So I would turn down more of those options. Um, but yeah, I like to use a platform for local things rather than big box companies and stuff like that. 
Yeah. yeah, it sounds like you guys pretty much have the same approach, like just aligning, picking brands to work with that you would actually use and like. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And I know, um, I don't think there's an option for this on TikTok yet, but I mean, there's so many people that are like, oh, you should monetize your videos. And I haven't done that yet either because it's like, well, I don't like watching ads. And they had a thing on um, for Facebook, I know, that was like, if you if you add ads that pop up in the middle of your video, you actually get more. I was like, well, who likes those? <laughs> like if I'm watching a video, like I have to be completely enthralled to actually have an ad pop up middle of a video, me actually watch the ad and then keep watching the video. Yeah. Otherwise like I'm out and I don't want people to do that. But yeah. I also am in a position where different from Steph, <laughs> I'm, I'm still fun employed, everything's freelance but I live at home so I don't have to worry about paying rent and things like that so we mm -hmm. we both might be in um I guess like slightly more privileged positions than some other people who are like literally starving artists yeah. the weird thing about TikTok um and I know you're in in, in the states um but Canada doesn't have a creator's fund mm -hmm. so um oh we are even for TikTok yeah so no Canadian TikTokers can because usually um and I believe maybe Australia is the same. There's another country that also doesn't have a creator's fund, but for like, if you're watching someone on the creator's fund in, you know, the States or uh, in the UK, like they will make money for how many times their videos are viewed and stuff, but Canada doesn't have that option. Mm -hmm. So I know like a lot of my friends who are like, you know, uh, my friend Cordelia, who's really big in the TikTok scene in Newfoundland. She's like, I wish I could get on the creator's fund so I could make, do this full time. But unfortunately Canadians can't do that. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Well, um, just so for people watching this, I would really encourage you guys to um, sign up to Amy's Patreon and um, <laughs> just give Steph some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Steph that needs idea. Patreon too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how do you guys create content? Like, is it sketched out and you write it all down or is it sort of improvised? I know um, specifically for my, my videos I've been doing, that's like, um, I don't know if we're supposed to cuss on this, but like, you know, shit crafty says a lot of those are actual um, uh, line submissions from people who have worked in that industry. So that's something that I actually do collect all of those, write everything out, I'll alter them, I'll add my own things to it. Um, but yeah, I, I certainly am a fan of um, writing things out. Um, but I do have a fairly extensive background in um, improv as well. It just kind of depends on what we're doing. I used to do, uh, one of my characters is uh, this crazy lady named Auntie Bev. And for a while I was doing, um, I would do like some Facebook live things. It was basically like 30 minutes of me um, improvising and working off of like people's comments and people would ask me things. Um, yeah, so it, it really depends, but I, I definitely, tend to be more of like, a, I'm going to write out a script type of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I am very similar. Like we are very similar in the way we do that. Um, <laughs> a lot of my content is either a me in the car ranting about something, which even um, in that instance, I do still kind of think of words before I, I'm like, okay, this just happened. So for example, uh, I went to shoppers a store the other day and the Bologna, which also hey, caused drama. Bologna is? Bologna? Yeah. Okay. I no, haven't okay. heard it pronounced Bologna. This is exactly what I was going to get into. I would, I have hate comments. They're like, how dare you say it like that? And I'm like, phonetically, it is Bologna. And that's yeah, all I, I will Bologna say on the top. Then at that point. <laughs> I'd rather that than Bologna. I'm like, Bologna is for children. Okay. Bo Bologna is adult meat. Okay. Um, but I went I there and I just interject and disagree with you. I do not believe that that is an adult meat. <laughs> we will have a conversation about this later. <laughs> I will put a pin in that. Um, but yeah, I, I found like this um, bologna at a store and it had two security tags on it. And I was like <gasps> in the store and I was like, oh my God, like, is it really that sacred? But like in the lineup, I was like, okay, and then I'm going to say this. And then this is a good line to use. So I almost like wrote it in my head, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot of things I do like in my ranting videos. It's just like writing in my head and then spewing it because you only get a minute. So it's like, you want to have all the best stuff in there. Um, and then like a lot of my characters are based off um, Newfoundland women. 
So you have like Nan and Mutter um, and just like the matriarch of Newfoundland kind of, and um, kind of staying true to, you know, uh, Mary Walsh, uh, Kathy Jones, you know, all the greats, Amy House. Cool. And when you guys are creating a character, what do you start with? Do you start with how they stand and walk? Do you start with a wig? Like what's the, like Amy, when you do Mitch, <laughs> Ugh, sorry. I just every time we say his name that he's gonna like appear. <laughs> I know, I know. People hate him. <laughs> yeah. When you do with him, did you start with the chin? Yeah, that was kind of something like I mean, I'm I'm not a fan of his by any means. <laughs> but he's just like there's something about him that's just like, how is he even like a real person? <laughs> he's just like one of the most unattractive men ever, which I, I try not to judge people on their physical appearances too. And you look at some photos of him from like decades ago, and I'm like, okay, he looked a little better, you know, people age and stuff. But it's also like, he's just such a horrible person <laughs> that it's like, I don't care. Like, I yeah. will judge you for your appearance. Yeah, um, yeah but just Greg's like- portrait. Oh, you know, <laughs> he's all yeah. I know, and I was like, I can't even believe that he's like married. Like, someone wants to live with that. <laughs> um, yeah, but that just kind of started with, uh, yeah, like my face. Um, a lot of people think I, mean, I do do pretty extensive makeup with that. Um, like, I like try to hide my eyebrows and things like that. But a lot of that is just like you know, trying to, like, emphasize, I mean, anyone can have, like, double chin, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just kind of, like, trying to change my face with that, um, but sometimes if I come up with new characters, it's more, like, I try and look at what I, um, like, kind of, like, what's missing from my, uh, repertoire, and like, okay, like I, I sh maybe like, I'm kind of good at this accent. Maybe I should try doing this accent and like, what's a character I can do with that. Cause I also kind of view my, um, all my social media platforms almost as like an online resume for whoever may come across them. And I, I try to show variety with things. And so that's also when, when I do my film crew videos, that's something like, oh, I haven't done a Southern accent in a while. And like, there's a big film industry in Atlanta. So I'm going to have, you know, someone have a Georgia accent. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the thing that motivates it. Um, I certainly do wear a lot of wigs. <laughs> I have a massive box. I know. I was thinking when I was watching your video, I was like, her wig budget must be up there. <laughs> Actually, a lot of them, uh, my friend goes to a lot of um, estate sales and she's always on the lookout for wigs for me. Oh. <laughs> like she, I, I have to credit my friend uh, Catherine with a lot of the wigs that she got me. That's awesome. <laughs> Buying wigs in an estate sale. That is iconic. Yeah, it is. Those are haunted for sure. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. probably. But maybe that helps with the character. But if you buy a it's brand true. new wig, like a quality wig, like those things are expensive. Like I only, I have one, like it's like a long blonde wig. I bought it for a Lady Gaga costume years ago. That's like a $70 wig. And that was a deal. <laughs> like you yeah. could spend hundreds of dollars on like a quality wig. And a lot of the ones mm -hmm. you got me are definitely like Halloween store things, but sometimes that adds to the charm of my no budget videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Steph, when you're creating a character, what do you start with? Um, I am a big tropey girl. Uh, so any of the Newfoundland characters I do, I try to stick in as many tropes uh, as I can. But if I'm doing other characters, and this kind of pertains to like sketch as well as uh, online stuff, um, I'm, I love people watching. I'm a big, uh, look, if I'm at a party, like I'm probably zooted in the corner and not talking to anyone. I'm just like, because Same, it's actually. so, <laughs> yeah, like, it's so funny <laughs> to just like, and like, I've worked in retail, I've worked in, you know, so many different jobs and I'm, I'm watching people come in like customers and a lot of the customers I interact with, I'm like, you know, if they're giving me uh, a saucy attitude, I'm like, oh, that's a character. Like she has a backstory. So I also try to keep um, relevancy in my characters. So stuff that is, you know, relevant, that is in tune with what's going on in the zeitgeist of social media and mm -hmm. culture, um, try to like kind of expand on that because then people will feel a sense of like familiarity with the character. Um, and that's, I think is a really big thing when it comes to doing characters, just someone, someone can be like, oh my God, that reminds me of like Lynn down the way. 
and then then they create that kind of bond with you as the character um in two yeah it's fun seeing like these new characters and i'm Steph gets this too where it's like we might have a specific character we do and there's so many different people they're like I know this person yes like even though it might not be even a specific person you model it on but like everyone I mean it's it's a big world everyone knows yeah. someone like this character yeah um we've touched on it a couple times but I do want to talk about comments because yeah. <laughs> it's hard to be a woman on the internet yes and you guys are really on the internet <laughs> yeah comments so yeah. are the worst <laughs> yeah. and I'm the type of person where like fortunately the the vast majority I get are really positive comments and people really enjoying things but I don't focus on those I will focus on the one or two really bad comments and the, those will keep me up at night it's like why doesn't this one person like me even though there will be like a hundred other comments where everyone's like I love you you're so great um, which is something that I need to continue to work on um, but I think in general, the world would be a much better place if there were no internet <laughs> comments anywhere, which isn't to say that people shouldn't have opinions and not that every, you know, of course there are going to be people who don't think that we're funny or, you know, we're just not that person's, I mean, I, I mean, comedy is so subjective anyway. I mean, I'm certainly not a fan of like, okay, like I'm more a Jim Carrey fan and not really like Adam Sandler. I'm not going to go on Adam Sandler's Twitter and respond to him like, you're really overrated. Like why, why, it's like, why, why do people just feel the need to share their opinion on everything? Yeah. And, or then like, I'll have some, I'll, I'll do a video. I'll be like, okay, this one's on crafty. And then someone will be like, I'm not really seeing any electricians in your videos. Like, okay this one's on crafty though yeah <laughs> let's focus on that let's focus on what yeah. we're seeing i just really don't understand or like now that i've done some political videos i had some people that were like you need to stay out of politics it's like i do the videos that i want to do i'm not getting paid for these you could yeah. watch them or you could not watch them but i i have never felt the need to comment on someone's video to, unless it was something where someone's being like blatantly racist or sexist and yeah. needs to be called out but if it's just a general like this wasn't that funny let's yeah. let's not do that let's let's think before we type people mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah I, I write like feature articles for our, our local cbc here and i've had people follow me on twitter and then DM me to tell me that um, I have a big nose. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> people just want to hate on people. And people got nothing know, like, else more, to do. It's more about them than us. Yeah. But it's it's still, it doesn't, like, I have, there's, um, there's uh, one of the bigger actors that follows me on instagram uh carly chaken she was on mr robot she just shared like yesterday there was someone who commented on like she it was her instagram post she was announcing that she's like a show that she wrote is going to be developed and produced which is like amazing it's like wow this woman made something and it's you know yay happy things and someone had commented on it and was like your voice was super annoying in Mr. Robot, and it almost made me stop watching the show. It was like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> stop! Yeah. Um, guys, I just am going to have to pause for one second because my dog is crying, and I just I need to let her outside. I saw your video. Um, I I'm trying when I'm on TikTok to make a habit of actually like looking at the people I follow and not just the For You page. Because yeah, I, I have that's a, I know well it's it's a habit too because it's like that's how you discover new things but it's like I don't even follow that many people so it's like I need to because I'm in the same thing like I have so many followers and they're not watching my things yeah. and why is that and it's probably because they're looking on their for you page but I saw the one that you posted um I think this was one from a couple days ago that one uh woman who was like I'm so afraid to be be fat something oh my god i was like you poor soul oh my god i just like can't there's so much on the internet like that i'm just like oh my god like yeah no, good for you for calling them out. what the fuck is wrong that's my favorite thing to do my favorite thing is to stitch something and be like hey you're a dumbass you know what i mean um Ugh. yeah yes see that's the type of thing that 
does need to be called out on the internet yeah. not not people that are just like i just don't think you're funny yeah <laughs> steph do you get many comments or is it yeah it's um it's interesting so i'm again the same as amy it's you could give me a hundreds and then if there's one in there that's negative that's all i will zero in on um it is hard as Andy knows, um, the comedy community in Newfoundland is a little bit terrible for women. Um, I have been told I'm not a comedian. I've been told I'm not funny multiple times. And it's like, to those people, I'm kind of like, that's fine. You keep doing shows where you're making racist comments. You do you. I'll continue to, you know, entertain the people who want to listen to me and who like listening to me. And that's my goal. Um, and something that I'm working towards m m like programming my brain to be like don't listen to them do it for the people who and like I have people who watch me religiously like every single time I put a video up people will comment and I'm like I love this person because and it's so nice I had um someone come up to me in the summer uh, at a restaurant and they were like my mother passed away a month ago and like all I do is watch your videos and like those are the kind of comments I'm like <laughs> and it kind of takes me away like a little bit because I'm like I'm so happy that something that I'm just ranting about in my car can make someone happy but it is really hard to get comments that are negative because then you're like oh, I'm actually not doing as well as I should even though that's totally not um, the thing but it's funny um, I wanted to make a comment about people feeling the need to go comment something uh, negative to someone I am ha I'm having this really hard time and like I'm a big drag race fan my roommate is a drag queen who I love and people are like always commenting on be like oh well this person shouldn't be here this person's not good like blah 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 it's like a baby are you really policing someone's art like why like for, and for what like what is your goal like what is the purpose like every single artist has their own thing and it's valid so like I don't know why people choose to create drama for no reason. Like, you know, there's a, there's a drag queen on RuPaul's Drag Race UK who just recently released a, an article with the Guardian being like, I was told exactly how someone wanted me to like kill myself. And I'm like, literally get a job, like get a hobby, take up crocheting, get a punching bag. It might be expensive, but y get your anger out somewhere else. Like it's just incredible. And I think, any, and being on the internet makes it incredibly easy for someone to do that to you because there is no face-to-face. -face. When I'm in confrontation, I am bawling. I cannot, I may be a strong woman, but I do be crying anytime anyone even asks to talk to me. Um, but the internet completely takes that barrier away. And it's like, you have a free for all to say whatever you think is responsible. So yeah, being a woman and an artist on the internet, uh, in any kind of uh, diverse group is pretty crap, but it's just remembering to tell yourself that like, this is one person who's probably, that's all he's doing for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? So. Has yeah, there's a lot you, of um, a comment with um, feedback that you actually like, were like, that's really valid and I'm gonna incorporate it. Or are they usually just like, love this or your bitch? <laughs> like, is it is there ever been anything like really valid and helpful in the maybe like one or two uh sometimes people try to give tips and i'm like it's not i'm glad that you think so uh but i won't be taking that advice and it's not a hard thing it's just that that doesn't it doesn't align with who i am or what i'm trying to portray so i'm just kind of like thank you for that uh but i won't be using that uh, but mostly it's just kind of like, ah, ha, 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 this is funny, or ah, ha, ha, you suck. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had someone on one of my videos that was like, please white balance your camera. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I probably should do that. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, it's, it's crazy that, you know, so many people don't, you know they just they just type words out onto the internet thinking that there are no consequences not realizing that there's there's another person like an actual human being on the other end of that and we have feelings mm -hmm. yeah 
Um, what are your goals? Like, where do you want to go next? What's like for the, for either the platforms or just career wise? Like, are you guys? Yeah. I certainly would like to be able to, um, be a full-time actor and creator, um, which technically that's what I'm doing right now. It's just for practically no money. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that would certainly be a goal. Like I, I've had a lot of people um, over the last year say like, oh, like I could totally see you on SNL. This one random woman messaged me. She was like, I dreamt that you hosted SNL and it was really good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, yeah, so certainly trying to um, continue, you know, on the path I'm going uh, would be the goal. And that's been the goal for a while. And I feel very fortunate that, um, I've made bigger steps towards that over the last like year or so than I have in the last several years combined. So I think it's getting better, getting better. Like just can't, can't give up. Mm -hmm. Steph? Yeah, I, uh, my goal is completely to be on this hour has 22 minutes, which is the Canadian version of SNL. Um, <laughs> also to be in big mouth, but that's, ne <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I'm never getting that. But yeah, I think I would love to be able to go to Second City. I'd love to be able to do sketch mostly um, professionally. I would love to be able to write and act in this hour is 22 minutes, which I think maybe could be a possibility. Like I think if I were oh, that's a possibility. at it, yeah, that's I just like really want to be Kathy Jones. Um, I'm, and that's where I would love to go. I just like would love to you continue to use my uh, comedy as a way to help people to make them laugh to especially during COVID when it's hard it's like I'm glad that people can go somewhere safe and like feel comforted um, but yeah my ultimate goal is to be on this hour so if anyone from this hour has 22 minutes is watching this please I will send you whatever you need um, just let me know <laughs> great um, and what advice do you have for people who are emerging on this platform uh, just like the internet in general or specific? No, I think TikTok. Well, TikTok, again, I still haven't totally figured it out. <laughs> um, or you I can think, do Instagram. Well, yeah, well, I, I think like how Steph said, it, it does seem very random as far as what things do take off and what doesn't. Um, but I think just like keep making content, try to stay consistent, which is something that I've been not doing that great on with TikTok. I was for a while, like before some other things, just like, okay, I'm gonna make, you know, some random TikTok every day. Um, but yeah, so don't, don't stop making content and then don't be discouraged, especially when some people haven't really, like me, haven't really figured out why some things go viral on there and why some things don't. I have so many videos on there that I think like, this one's absolutely hilarious. I put a lot of effort into it, got no views at all. Um, I mean, you, you can't take it personal. <laughs> just keep doing it. Um, like I have one of my, um, good friends who's an animator. She finally joined TikTok. I kept trying to, I was, was saying there's so many artists on TikTok and, um, I think you'd be really good at this. Her first video now has like over like 25,000 views just for her very first thing. And she was like, oh my God, this is great. And then immediately her next video, she's like, it, it only has like a hundred views so far. I was like, don't take it personally. Just keep doing it keep doing mm -hmm. what you do and hopefully um, have fun while you're doing it. If anything, make the videos for you. Yeah, I would, I would say the same. I'd say like, keep the balance of, it's interesting when it comes to platforms like Instagram or TikTok, because for me, I make a lot of Newfoundland content. Is that the only content I want to make? Not at all. Uh, but sometimes I strategically plan them to drop them in if I'm not doing so well. It's like, here's a sketch I wrote, pop that in there, gets it, and then my next few get it. But like, continue to make content for you. Like, if you like it, I mean, there's been a bunch of videos that I have taken down and I regret because I'm like, you know what? That was funny. And maybe someone will come across that and really like it. And, you know, it might blow up. Um, so, yeah, make content for you. Don't be discouraged. I mean, I was freaking dancing on TikTok this time last year which is so stupid um but i was um, um you never know you what had that video go that was on breakfast tv 
Yeah. You almost, took, you almost took that one down. Didn't I you? did. I did. Good for any, that's good for you remembering that. Um, <laughs> I, you. I made a video of me, uh, I was on the couch and Newfoundland last year had a 90 centimeter snowfall and we were in a state of emergency for five days. Um, and so we were all like, oh, can't wait for the warm weather. And then it was like so hot that summer. Uh, I was like sweating and it was just a video of me being like, woo, like no more snow. It's warm here. And then I open the door and like choke on the air. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stay inside. And I was like, ah, it's so stupid. Like it's so dumb. And I was just like, no, I'll like leave it up, whatever. Like, and I almost did delete it. And then I woke up the next morning and it had like almost 40,000 likes. And then they featured it on breakfast TV, like CTV. And I was like, okay, so I'm glad I didn't delete that. <laughs> but it's funny how it works. Sometimes it's slow build and then it's like, boom. Or sometimes it starts really good. And you like, there's many I've had that like have a bunch of views and a bunch of likes and then completely just stop yeah. for no reason. Um, how do you guys like balance your political beliefs with being funny and doing comedy? Like, especially on TikTok, because I see TikTok as like, it's a lot of fun, but there's it's also such a like tool for change so when you create stuff are you concerned like this is like this is gonna affect me negatively because it's political or do you not worry about that i'll just do what feels good i used to be worried about that but being in the united states and having the last four years that we had i really felt like um you know like okay yes i might lose some followers but i really felt strongly that I was on the correct side <laughs> of things and um, especially with how polarized things have been in this country and continue to be um, so yeah so it got to the point where like I don't care like I don't really even want to associate with some people who are like you know still even now he's not in office anymore still continue to be trump supporters and things like that so i don't care anymore i really don't you know maybe if i get big i'll start getting death threats or something but i don't i don't know i think they're terrible people and i don't yeah. care that's that's very true like i'm i'm very same like i i'm very political if you follow me on twitter twitter is another outlet that i use that is just like a diary that I use when I'm inebriated uh, I just like push out whatever I want and it's just so freeing but I do I made a TikTok when I was a service worker about a leader of a party here in Newfoundland who oh, treated yes. me very poorly at my minimum wage job and it blew up so much that I now have a government job because it was offered to me by an opposing party so hey. <laughs> good things can happen um but yeah, I think that I, uh, I am a very political person and politics is always going to be funny. People love political comedy. Um, I was in the tour of Review, which is a show that happens in Newfoundland uh, that um, tours around Newfoundland and talks about like the political happenings of the year prior. Um, and people love it. Like people eat it up because politics is something that affects us, but it doesn't interact our everyday um, like you don't wake up most people. I know me and Andy probably do. And like are right on the political jump, like want to know everything that's going on, but it's just something that people know and keep in the back of their heads so they can, and it, it, most of the times it's stressful. So people like to laugh at it. And a lot of politicians make great characters. Like, like it's a great option, uh, an opportunity for characters. So I say whatever I want, um, because I, I too believe I'm on the correct side of things. So I like to uh, use my platform to, to to speak on things that may be happening uh, in 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 the community. Yeah, and that's such a level of privilege too. Like I know when oh. I was on um, dating apps, <laughs> one of the times where I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll be on now. Um, I remember there was this one guy that I matched with, and I think I had asked him. Um, what his political views were because that was very important to me and i basically again in my country want to make sure that they're not trump supporters and he said something like oh like i'm i don't really care about politics i kind of try and stay out of this and stuff and i didn't really respond to that and then the next day he texted me he's like well i didn't realize that you were looking to date a politician like i hope you have a nice life and stuff so i was like okay you know white man yeah <laughs> like, you 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 have to care about politics. Yeah, I mean, like it's it. your life. Like, it's your future. Yeah. People, uh, especially I, people who say, it. 
Well, you dodged well, the bullet. You dodged the bullet. People who yeah, usually say, uh, I, should have I don't really, I don't really follow politics. It's like, well, like they're probably not on the side you want them to be on. So that's why they're saying it. Uh, yeah. I'd be like red flag. See ya. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm it glad was, that you feel like the, Amy, it's like absolutely yeah. a privilege, like to like, some of us really need to worry about it. Yeah. Some of us are, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, if you're working a minimum wage job, if you're like, you know, there's so many it's a that guy was lucky that he couldn't like oh yeah i mean <laughs> right. people who are act, like politicians who are actively trying to take rights away from women <laughs> and especially yeah. the last four years it's like so many horrible things happened and things are finally starting to turn around thank god <laughs> mm-hmm. but you know we're not, we're not out of it yet and there's still a lot of no. people that uh have those horrible views and i and, like you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of talk and it's like a lot of comments actually i get on videos it's like yeah well at least you're not in the states like you're in canada it's like no baby canada got a lot of problems okay quite a few that we are still working on it's like this is not like we're gonna jump the border from the states and now you're in this like happy land like no a lot of it is still continued over here so i think that's like a weird assumption people make about that too so yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of people more. like i'm moving to canada <laughs> Yeah, so please like, don't well, do that. We've got a very scary yeah. conservative party yeah. here too, and they're yeah. gaining popularity every day. So, good luck. <laughs> yeah. 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 We should end this on a happier note. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, um, what? <laughs> what is a happy note we can end on? <laughs> Trump's not guys- president anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys currently writing anything or working on um, some scripts? Are you looking, Amy, ever to sort of go into the directing sort of group? Yeah, I um, directing is always something that I have been interested in and for a while was really considering it even more than acting. But it, during that time, I wasn't acting and then realized how much I missed it and kind of needed that creative, crazy outlet for me to unleash all of that stuff within me <laughs> that you could kind of only socially acceptably do through comedy um but yeah i have a few things i'm working on um certainly some more film crew parody things and uh yeah kind of trying to i think like so film crew parodies are my thing doing newfoundland content is steph's thing but we it's like that's not all that we do <laughs> yeah. we have other things that we're trying to do we're trying to branch out even though that's what we're most known for but um yeah i have a couple other things in the works um, i also wanted to get back into to doing song covers uh, which isn't by any means what i think i will ever be able to do professionally but i just really like doing it and i love singing and um, that's kind of more content i just want to do for me and Amy, where can people find you? So people who watch this, I want them to be able to give you money every month. I want them to be able to find <laughs> your content. <laughs> well, uh, I'm available on, uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. Um, pretty much everything. You can find me just with my name uh, at Amy Lajoie, A-I-M-E-E-L-A-J-O-I-E. Uh, I am on Patreon, patri- patreon.com slash Amy Lajoie. I'm on Cameo. If people like some of my characters and want to send me, uh, hey, Steph, hit me up about cameo. <laughs> I, I could get you on there. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, but if people want, um, yeah, personalized videos from some of my characters, I'm on there too, but anything and everything helps. Um, I still think the one of the best ways to help struggling artists out though is to share their videos. If there was something that, it, my, my general rule is if it made you laugh, give it a share because sometimes that helps so much more i mean money is nice too money's very nice but that money really so just nice. makes a huge difference <laughs> just keep sharing keep sharing everything and in the future in post covid world amy is available to come to canada to work in your movies I'm yes sure. <laughs> i've never been to canada i would love to go <laughs> first stop here yes. um my I would really this year, I don't know if it's going to happen. I would, I'm really interested in making a cover out like an album of uh, parody songs. It's like in my back pocket, I have a bunch of Christmas ones. Andy knows like whenever we do sketch shows, I'm like, okay, here's five parody songs. I just wrote a sketch called wholesome 
prison where inmates are best friends. And I just, I want to, <laughs> I want to just keep doing stuff like that, make a CD, do it for me uh, and for something for people to laugh at. But yeah, continuing, uh, continuing to practice sketch and writing so I can be on 22 um, and just kind of focusing more on art because I do have really bad imposter syndrome. So oftentimes I'm like, well, that's it. I'm not an artist, I'm a government worker. And then it's like, you know, I, I kind of forget um, my creativity. So focusing more on my creativity and focusing more on allowing myself to be happy with the content I create. That's um, where I'm yeah. at this year. Yeah, awesome. Okay, guys, I think that's the hour.